It's not every day that I find myself transported into a German fairy tale, but today was an exception. Travel with us to the Rhine Valley, where we leave the boat in a harbor for a few days and try out a different form of transportation. I'm Maya, and this is Aladino. In mid-November, we converted our 28-foot sailboat into a riverboat, and we started going north, from the Mediterranean all the way to the North Sea. In front of us, we had 2,000 kilometers and 200 locks. Join us as we navigate river currents, discover incredible places, cruise through canals, wait out a global pandemic in the heart of France, and record the whole voyage with a new episode every Friday. This is North Through the Continent. We're going north through the continent. Good morning from the Rhine Valley. Now, if you've been following our journey along the Rhine, then you might know two things. The first thing is that we're here on a boat. And the second thing is that where we are right now is perhaps one of the most beautiful sections on the Rhine River. And so we want to spend some time to explore it. But the reason why this place is so beautiful is because it's composed of these soaring cliffs and vineyards and castles on top of hills. But this very steep landscape makes for a very narrow chasm that the river runs through. And so navigating this section of river is actually one of the most difficult on the entire journey. There's a lot of shipping traffic, there's a lot of obstacles in the form of sandbanks and rocks directly in the middle of the river. There's a lot to pay attention to. And so in order to actually experience all of the beauty that is around here, we've decided to take a few days, leave the boat in the harbor, and go explore by land. The harbor here has some bikes, so we're gonna head out, look for some castles, look for some vineyards. One of my goals as well is to get to a town called Bacharach, I'm not sure about the pronunciation, uh, which I've heard is especially beautiful. So that's the goal for the day, go explore on land. In the last episode, we explored the town and vineyards of Rudesheim, the little town where our harbor is. But the Rhine Valley is made up of numerous little towns along the river's edge, and ancient castles appear on nearly every hill. So it was time to do some exploring. The journey would begin on the other side of the river, starting from the town of Bingen. <laughs> It didn't take long before we had to stop and take in the views. The vineyards and the cable car of Rudesheim stood peacefully in the hazy midday light. Passenger boats chugged along the river and everywhere we looked was a new castle or monument. It felt like a moment of pause. Instead of adventurers rushing down river, we were now just tourists enjoying wine country. I felt completely carefree. <laughs> There are stories at every turn here. This tower is called the Mouse Term or the Mouse Tower. There's an interesting legend about this place, but I'll save that for next week's episode. For now, I was in high spirits, rushing along on a bicycle, something I've really missed. of this trip down the Rhine. It's called the Rheinstein Castle and it looks like a little fairy tale. Let's go, it's a steep climb. Magical, an actual fairy tale castle. 
Time for the first cool white wine. Maybe, maybe. Okay, yup, now this is a castle. Rhine River, you terrible commercial highway. I guess I'll forgive you all the frustrations you've thrown at us. From up here, the Rhine looked positively picturesque. Rheinstein Castle has been under private ownership since 1975 by the Hecker family. They've restored it to beautiful condition and the rooms inside are preserved as a glimpse into what the castle may have once looked like. It was built in the late 13th century by the Archbishop of Mainz, who built it for two purposes. First, as a customs castle, and second, to protect against robber knights who were plaguing the region. Now, these two things, building a customs castle and protecting against robber knights, are actually kind of contradictory. The robber knights of the Rhine were less like Robin Hood characters wielding lances on horseback. They were more just like greedy, would-be taxmen. They were often feudal landowners who decided to increase their fortunes by charging exorbitantly high taxes and tolls to anybody who passed by, often with threat of kidnapping or seizure of property. In fact, there are several toll buildings built on the Rhine itself, like the mouse term that we passed by earlier, that would string chains across the river to prevent any boats from passing through without first paying a toll. This was a dirty and yet very lucrative business. Robber knight castles sprung up everywhere, which accounts for the incredible amount of castles still on the Rhine to this day. Eventually, though, a guild was formed to rid the region of robber knights. The guild destroyed several robber knight castles and attempted to put an end to the lawless tax collection, kidnapping, and ransoming. And so boats and people are now free to pass along the Rhine without being held up by robber knights. Although we did have to pay an entrance fee to get into this castle. Hmm. And we just uh, decided which two wines we would like to try. The wine review coming next. Oh dear. <laughs> We're not quite wine connoisseurs, but you don't need to be to appreciate the view. We were right above the castle's own vineyard, which sloped directly down to the Rhine. So we bought this guidebook earlier today in the tourist office. Um, we bought a few little guidebooks, and this one is about the castles of the Rhine. So we're sitting here reading it, and I, I don't think that they actually got anyone to check the translation. I think they just stuck it into a computer program. So we were reading about the Mauseturm, which is that white castle built in the middle of the river on that little island. And it means the mouse house? The mouse tower. The mouse tower. And the first sentence says, the erection, purpose, and meaning of the name are in the dark. <laughs> which I guess just means that nobody knows, but that's just such a funny first sentence. <laughs> The erection, yeah. purpose, and meaning of the name um, are in the dark. <laughs> Okay, so we're finally descending from the castle and we had plans to go so far today and see so many castles and we ended up spending about three hours there because it was so interesting and there was so much to look at and we were both filming like crazy. Um, so <laughs> I guess that's one uh, 
thing to note about this region is that there's just so much more to see than you could ever imagine before you get here. There's just around every corner, it seems like there's something new. So now we're finally gonna go on to the next town. We're a bit hungry. Maybe we'll get something from a bakery or something. Um, and I don't know if we'll even get to another castle today. We'll see what happens. Although we had spent more time in the castle than planned, we were still determined to make it to the town of Bacharach that evening, not only because we had heard it's a beautiful place, but also because we were hatching a last minute plan. thirsty and hungry and we have come up with a little bit of a funny plan so this town is quite far actually from where our boat is um, and we were thinking apparently there's one of Germany's best hostels here so we might spend the night in the hostel here and then bike back tomorrow so we get to see town it looks beautiful okay we're fed and watered and we're gonna head up to the hostel and see if there's availability. Now I was going to tell you about the hostel, but I think I will make you wait and see. Follow us. So we're not totally sure how to get there. But we'll get there. But we'll get there. Exactly. My philosophy always. Well said, Amore. Aha! Uh -huh. I see a sign for it. Turn left here. I sure hope that there's availability in these rooms because this is quite an uphill struggle. I can see it. Here it is, perhaps the most impressive hostel I've ever seen in my life. Normally you have to book well in advance, so we weren't certain if we could find a room, but we thought maybe coronavirus might have changed things and there would be availability. Worth a try anyway. This isn't even a floor, it's just a rock. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Even if they don't have room for us, we should at least have a drink Sleep on the on terrace. The table? Oh. oh. <laughs> I am just totally overwhelmed and in awe of this region. We have barely scratched the surface of what there is to see and we've been traveling all day on the bicycles and it's just incredible. We've seen two castles. More than that. Well, but we've been inside. We've visited two. We've visited two and there's something like- I don't, about seven, but yeah. there's like 20 or more. Yeah. yeah. hoping that we would be lucky and that they would have availability but of course it's a castle in the middle of summer so there's not availability which we're sad about but it was a very last minute decision on our part anyway so it's okay we can't complain um, so now we're gonna figure out what we want to do our options are we could rent a room somewhere else in town it's a possibility um, but we could also bike back um, and spend the night on magic carpet which we might end up doing Back there. Oh, back there. 
So we began coasting back home, swishing past gorgeous scenery, the breeze blowing away the sweat of the day. I felt amazing. I felt light. Just a few episodes ago, we shared with you how stressed out parts of this Rhine journey have left us. Now it felt like we were getting rewarded. In exchange for the currents and the giant ships and the cavernous locks, we were now presented with castles and wine. A fair bargain, I suppose. I think this goes to show that there are ups and there are downs. It's true for life and it's especially true for boating. I've often heard it said that the highs are higher and the lows are lower when you're on a boat. I think any sailor can attest to that. The pleasures of an unobstructed sunrise or a deserted bay or even cruising through a canal in France are unquestionably powerful joys. But the lows are also powerful. The lows usually involve risk to your home, your safety, in really bad cases even your life. Anyone who's spent time on boats knows these two extremes. And for those who pursue this lifestyle, the highs are worth the lows. But it's worth mentioning that the lows still exist. They always do. It's just a matter of balancing it all out with the good stuff. Okay, one more surprise from the town of Bacharach. I don't know how to say it. Before the long bike ride home. And I'm just heading up there right now. More stairs, my goodness. You have to be fit to visit this region. I'm exhausted. Okay, here we are. Thank you so much to all of you for watching and leaving comments and giving us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell so you can continue to follow our journey through the continent. And an extra big thank you to our patrons for making these episodes possible. We really truly could not do this without you. And an extra, extra thank you to these folks who really go above and beyond to make sure these videos keep being produced every week. We'll see you all next time.